start off with the originators, uh, the second wave black metal, Burzum, Dark Throne, Emperor, Mayhem. Black metal, I would say, could be compared to death metal um, and perhaps thrash metal in it, that it has aggression and similar drums and vocals. But I think what makes black metal different is that it, uh, it does focus more on uh, emotion or atmosphere. It it's, uh, tries to go a little bit deeper, I think, in those genres. But there'll always be bands who really support the true uh, ethics of black, what black metal is about. If you're going to start with it, I'm talking about the history of black metal, you can go to two different directions. You go back to the 1960s with bands like Black Sabbath and Black Widow. He introduced a dark concept, he introduced the whole idea of an occult satanic approach, purely for lyricism, purely for artistry. But in reality, there's another way to approach black metal, and that is really with the band who invented the term, Venom, in the early 1980s. They came out with a title and concept and idea of black metal, which was satanic, which was to differentiate themselves from a lot of the new wave of British heavy metal bands of the time. And it had a dark imagery, a fascination with hammer horror, a fascination and a deep respect and abiding interest in what one might call the taboo side of life. Not just Satanism, but also elements of lyricism that went where other bands feared to tread. This is where black metal originated, this is where Venom originated, this is where I still live. Take down your soul to the gods rock and roll! It's a bit daunting really when, when you do think about it, what, what has happened in, sort of, in the name of black metal. But again, it was never thing, something we set out to purposely develop or instigate, if you like. You know, the church burnings and things like that, I mean, you know, I'll admit, we used to sneak into the old graveyards and, you know, do photo sessions there and all that kind of stuff. Um, but as for wanting to go out and actually destroy the stuff, I mean, that, that never really crossed our minds. So I think it's, it, it's, it's an aspect of it that people have taken and taken to the extreme. Lay down your soul to the gods rock and roll! Most of play in uh, Creative Forest. We started in uh, early 1991. We played very basically, like very rock and roll, trash. We've been touring a lot and just released a new album. And um, what's the album called? You all. perfectly uh, fits to mayhem in this place. We are here in south of Norway um, in a small commune or village just around. I see it's just it's just spreading, you know. It's more and more bands and, and more and more uh, uh, directions. Actually with mayhem, we, uh, it's not our goal. I think Mayhem is enough big. I mean, it's it's an extreme metal band. It has a certain limit. It would be strange if we would be on charts or anything, and we don't have any. We just do our music, which is actually more and more extreme. If 
you live in Norway, in Oslo, it's a really small town and uh, you hear all the stories and you read the newspapers and stuff and, and like mid-90s was the like, first time I read about mayhem and uh, stuff what was going on. My uh, booking man, he said like, uh, you, you want to meet Mayhem and maybe I want to work on one show in Rockefeller. They really want to have like a microphone stand, something special. So we had a meeting, they liked the stuff, and I did the microphone stand, like three meter high, like a totem thing, you know. So I was really pleased, and uh, since this day I uh, in the uh, black metal scene in Norway. The Mayhem is quite uh, tired to get like the same uh, questions all over again in interviews about Euronymous and eating brains and suicides and stuff like this. If someone who's interested in Mayhem didn't know, don't know the story about it, you know, I mean, read some old interviews and don't ask them about it anymore because everyone has to move on, you know, I mean, it's really important the music, what they're doing now and if you want to come to Norway and ask questions about black metal and where does it come from, and uh, you got like the same images every time, like uh, the forest, you know, it's dark here, you know. You got people, uh, white faces going around looking like some like monkeys and stuff like this, and you got this cross upside down, you know. So uh, I went in to change this, you know. That's really good to work with Mayhem because they're really open for new stuff and they want to be different, you know. They also don't want to be called uh, Satanist people because if you believe in God, then you can believe in the devil. But they don't believe in God, then you can't believe in the in, in, uh, devil, you know. Like, I turn around the cross again, you know, to make it more blasphemic. I want to use church ethics. I mean, this them more of and you do the other way around. When I was first approached about the concept of a black metal documentary, I had uh, almost a schizoid approach. Part of me was very excited about the opportunity, another part of me was very wary and sceptical about the approach that was going to be taken. The scepticism really arises from history, and the historical approach to black metal from the outside has always been one of sensationalism. Go for the headlines and don't worry about anything else, and that means murder, church burnings, corpse paint, silliness, laughter, and also a little bit of Satanism. And because of that, I think the general approach for anybody who's attempted this before has been to be way late and sidetracked into dealing only with those aspects and elements, forgetting about everything else which goes up to make the rich tapestry and heritage that is black metal. And even those from deep within who've attempted it have got lost in the maze. So that's where the scepticism comes from. It's a very difficult subject to approach because where do you start? And I think we have the advantage of going in saying we know where we're going to start. We're going to start with the music. We're going to start with the fact that it does have a history, it does have a heritage and we'll spread out from there. So we never got lost in the maze, we created our own one. I would say that black metal is uh, definitely the darkest and um, most extreme metal subgenre. Uh, what I know about black metal, um, I'm, I was in the early 90s. I was really into death metal more than black metal, and I remember when I was, it was back in 1993, 1994. A friend of mine like gave me a tape of a of Immortal, and for the, for the first time I heard a sound that was very different from anything I knew before. Um, I would say that it was the music was very, uh, very dark, very intense, and uh, there was some element of goth in it. And yeah, so that, that's that's the first time I kind of heard about black metal.
to me, Alice. Rock and roll, that's what it is. So tell me a little bit about rock and roll. What's rock and roll to Abbott? Rock and roll? Yeah. It's the devilish music. <laughs> The devil is in everybody. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a demon in everybody. We didn't really know when we were going to Norway what we were going to do or what the outcome is going to be and how people were going to take to us or anything like that. I mean, we just really went there. It was more like kind of being on the road, you know, and like just doing what we think we need to do. And so we, we didn't really know what was going to happen. So when we went to Dimu, they were one of the first interviews, well, the first interview we did in Norway. And we just thought, well, you know, the best way of relaxing people is bring alcohol. <laughs> So we stopped off and we bought beer in Norway, which we didn't even know if that's the right beer. But luckily it was actually a good beer. It was the cheapest beer as well and everyone seemed to like it. You know, so, you know, I think that kind of made them feel a bit more relaxed, you know, because I'm sure that normal media type people wouldn't just rock up with like six beers or 12 beers or whatever it is and say, well, you know. Kids had their makeup and uh, you know with the we didn't know the lyrics or whatever but it was like party music and we were drumming to it and playing air guitar and whatever you know and but they had this image and it kind of it made us interested in, uh, in what uh, if you go further down that road what what place be, what, lay, what secret does it uh, have or whatever and we just explored that uh, that area and took it further and further and further. And then black metal involved. We're selling tons more record now than any black metal combined, you know, in the early nineties. So that's a good thing because it's getting out to the masses and I think that's a good thing. That's what the old boys wanted in the early ages and yeah, and at the early stage. Wanted to to reach the masses because we want we're so fed up with all this uh, music you see on MTV and whatever and just Everybody can say that, but um, <laughs> we are. Well, yeah, I started with Dimmy, you know, uh, uh, half, one and a half year ago. Being asked to do the uh, re recording of Stormblast, and uh, of course, I said yes, you know, no problem. And uh, I mean, it worked out very well, you know, and being close friends, as we always have, you know, and living in the, in the near. Uh, since it was like very natural to continue to do the studio and well, touring and stuff.
<laughs> it's going to be picked up. That's a Dave, let's go. <laughs> Whether it has to do with Satanism can be difficult to answer. It has a lot to do with what is called by some historians of religion uh, teenage Satanism, which is very often just an inverted form of Christianity, uh, very influenced by horror movies and so on. And you have to understand that the sort of the portrayals of Satanism that you get in horror movies and horror culture uh, mostly is based on a Christian outlook on life. Uh, that God is good, the devil is evil, and so on. And I think a lot of the black metal people accepted this, and they actually wanted to be to be evil. Uh, but it has very little to do with organized Satanism in the way that you know it from groups like the Church of Satan, the Temple of Set, even the Order of the Nine Angles. to the um, Agamoth and uh, I'm playing a band called Abgut. We do play black metal and I'm the vocalist and guitarist. Black metal is the expression of those dark feelings that everybody tried to hide and everybody tried to exclude uh, from their own life. And likely enough there are people that are not scared to express themselves. We do express ourselves through the music, pushing the boundaries of extreme and uh, with speed, with aggressive sound, with distortion up to the stars basically and with the highest speed we can deliver as we could express with the slowest speed as well but the intensity of the message comes from the sounds we produce. There is a pretty big scene down in Italy to be totally honest with you. Every little town has its own band and is growing stronger as everybody starts to believe a bit more in the validity of this new style. And since I started it, in the town where I started we were the only band. Today in Casino we count at least six, seven bands. Because it's exactly what people want to hear, it's exactly what everybody wants to express and it's a rebellion against, you know, the society, against the value, or against anything that everybody wants to impose on you. And it's the best way to say stop there because I got my saying and my saying is black metal. Black metal! I've been touring with Upgot quite a lot all over Europe by now and I can say that black metal is the only scene where and whenever you go it's the same. The feeling is the same, the expression is the same. Everybody might have his own particularity like maybe some English brand prefer not to have a corpse paint and some other country believe in that but the sound and the music and the message is exactly the same. It was also almost ironic that these very supposedly satanic people, when they got in touch with real Satanism, uh, for example like the Church of Satan, they reacted very negatively to it because they saw it as life-affirming, as positive, as stressing values like uh, being an upstanding citizen, for example, being law-abiding. Uh, the Church of Satan stresses those things very heavily uh, and on some Norwegian black leather metal albums you can actually find uh, a picture of Anton LaVey, the Church of Satan founder, with the sort of prohibition mark over him and the, the text anti-LaVey because they saw him as too much of a humanist.
don't call it murder music, call it murder music. This is black metal. This is the way black metal is perceived in 2007. And as I say, this is, for the moment, the definitive approach to the story of black metal. Somebody may come along later with a bigger budget, more time to put it together. However, it's going to be a challenge to better what's on here because the bottom line is enthusiasts have driven it and the energy is obvious. Oh, 